<laughs> okay. If you guys happen to see this blue light flashing, if you notice that, just let me know, because that's an indication that the batteries are running low. Okay, so we figured out A, and um, I think every group was on the right track, so I'll just write the equation down um, so you, you can be sure that you got it. Okay, so uh, now that you've derived that, you can use it. Um, we'll use that in a problem in a few minutes. All right, so let's look at um, the spring mass system turned on a horizontal frictionless surface, so sliding back and forth. Um, the nice thing about that is um, we can relate it to the spring force. So our picture here, the spring force is always acting opposite to the direction of motion. So if the block is moving to the right, the spring force is to the left. So our sum of forces in the x direction always equals MA, and that would equal minus KX since that spring force is to the left. So minus KX was our definition of spring force. K is the spring constant. Um, I actually have been trying to call it K spring because so much fun. We have a different K term that is not the same K. Okay. So we'll get a different K term next week um, that's not the same as spring constant. So I guess make a habit of writing K sub SP to uh, keep that differentiated in your mind. Um, so let's just look at this equation. Um, MA equals minus KX at some extremes. So if we look at the the farthest stretch that you could get, your maximum amplitude, x equals a. So we can put capital A in for x. And um, at that point, your block is stationary because it's going to stop momentarily before moving to the left. And if you look at your graph, when velo velocity is stationary and x is maximum, your acceleration is at negative maximum. So when x equals big A, then acceleration equals minus A max. So I put that in there, and then our definition for A max was omega squared times A. So I make that substitution, and the A amplitude goes away. So now I have M omega squared equals K, the spring constant. And I can rearrange that, and now I have a new expression for angular frequency that depends on the spring constant and the mass. I'll add that here. So just depending on what information they gave you in a given problem, that might be all you know, and that's the only way you could calculate angular frequency. So if that's your angular frequency, then you could write your period now as 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So you derive that when it's only at maximum acceleration, though? Does that hold true all the time? It will hold true all the time, yeah. So we just use that point in time to derive it, but that, that relationship is true, is valid all of the time. Yeah, it's just that if we didn't use that maximum value, then we'd have our sines and cosines, and we'd have to pull out all of our trig identities again, and we don't want to do that. The reason why it's true all the time is because it's frictionless. Yes, because right? mm -hmm, there's that only, the only force is the spring force. Okay. And we wouldn't be in simple harmonic motion if there was friction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's look at how, um, now that we have got a relationship between 
angular frequency and um, spring constant and amplitude, let's see how those variables might affect our simple harmonic motion equation. So if we increase the mass, but we keep the amplitude and the spring constant the same, so the mass in our equation is in the denominator. So if we increase the mass, mass it will decrease the angular frequency. Um, if your angular frequency goes down, that means that it's going to take longer to make one complete cycle. So if, if we start out blue as the original mass, then as your mass increases, you go towards yellow. So red is the in-between and yellow is the most extreme case. This one here, we increase the spring constant, but we keep the amplitude and mass the same. In that case, the spring constant's on the numerator, so if you increase spring constant, you increase angular frequency. Increase angular frequency, your sine wave is going to get tighter. So the blue one is the original line, and you can see the red gets tighter, and then the yellow gets tighter still. Okay? And then last but not least, this one's fairly obvious. If you increase amplitude and everything else stays the same, then the shape stays the same, it's just the amplitude gets taller every time. So that one's easy. Wrapped up in here are a lot of like concept kind of questions. So um, keep, keep that in mind as you're taking notes. Any questions on that before we move on? Oh, I'm glad I'm not driving right now. I hate when this like weird nighttime weather where it looks like it's about to have a tornado. <laughs> It's a great movie. <laughs> All right, so to sort of reduce the number of concept questions we have next week, I put a few in this week's lecture. Um, so this is an X of T graph. So at which of the following times does the object have the most negative acceleration? So think about it. And I'll ask you to vote, and then we can talk about it and see uh, what you guys are thinking. <laughs> well, we're all going to vote at the same time. It's OK if you're wrong. So who thinks the answer is A, T over 4? One vote. Where is T over 4? OK. Who thinks it's B, T over 2? Two votes? OK, no, that's fine. Uh, who thinks it's C, 3T over 4? And who thinks it's D, when the time is the period? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 votes. OK, so that was the majority is D. So we'll start there. Why did you guys choose D? So the acceleration is going to be like at the, or the maximum acceleration is going to be at the, uh, limit of the stretch, or like maximum stretch, and that's going to be when the uh, position is at A, like the A. At, at A? Yeah, at A, like the maximum of here. Okay, so does anyone want to add to what Jordan said who voted for D? You looked at the board? So, so explain what you saw on the board, Jerry and Brandon. Uh, for the position at the max, at the maximum value, mm -hmm. uh, you can see on the acceleration graph, it's the opposite. Okay, so for the most negative acceleration, you can look at that position graph, and it was the most maximum position. All right. Did anyone do something different? Besides, so Jordan kind of thought about the system itself. Jerry and Brandon looked at the graph. Anyone use some other method? Who answered D? All right. Um, anybody who voted for something else feel strongly about their view about the other one and want to make a case for some other answer? So have you all been swayed to D? Yeah. OK. We've all been swayed to D. Let's verify that D was the correct answer. And it was. OK. Um, so we're going to do a couple examples. These are in this packet up here, so if you haven't taken one, you can come and take one. And uh, 
mostly these are just like plug and chug kind of questions, so it's not really necessary for me to answer them on the board, but if you do get stumped, let me know. And we'll spend, we'll spend about 10 minutes on this. Um, there's the answers provided, so if you don't finish, that's okay. I can show you. It just measures the force if you stretch the spring a certain amount. Okay. Actually, don't use these very often because we've got the vernier equipment. But this is a spring balance. So if you, if you, it's got a spring in there, so the more you pull on it, the more it'll measure the force that you're pulling with.
Because we already have this, you just need to do a free contraction before it, right? Where is everybody at? Starting 14.3. Okay. Is that, is anybody done? Oh, that's okay. Uh, you can shut it off. Yeah. Good call.